let's talk about number two, Central Missouri on the road at Central Oklahoma. This one was a, I don't know, every adjective in the book. I think shootout is, is a great way to describe it just because of the offensive nature of this one. I'll get some highlights up here as I talk about it. Railing Harlem, Harlem Hill winner, excuse me, Zach Zabrowski getting things going for Central Missouri. But uh, that defense from UCO early on, man, they were doing some, some absolute damage. And I think... The crazy thing is, no one's been able to limit Zabrowski there. They've had some success defensively. No one's been able to limit his stat lines. And uh, in a loss, they scored 40 points. He was 27 of 55, 437, and six touchdowns on the day. One interception, big time takeaway from the Bronchos there. And for Zabrowski, 27 of 55 is not the best passing completion percentage for him in his career. We know that. But the fact that he still has the confidence to keep slinging that thing, that's one of a couple sacks. On the night, they actually got to Zabrowski six times. That Broncho defense, that's a big-time uh, stat there for UCO. The man of the hour, and there's a couple of them, but Jet Huff, that's one of the names you definitely want to talk about, the quarterback for Central Oklahoma. 42 for 54, 457, and three touchdowns. Didn't have an interception. How about the new fountain in their stadium? Did you guys see that back there? I think it's pretty badass. Here is Huff under center right now, or in his shotgun, I should say, handing the ball off. They got things going, that offense. Uh, Jalen Gattrell, 20 carries, 167 yards, 163, excuse me, three touchdowns. And then through the air, Terrell Davis, 14 catches. We talked about him earlier, our player of the week. UCO, man. I mean, just a really, really standout performance from this squad. They have four different guys go ahead and register sacks. Had the interception from David Williams there. And when you look at the box score and the breakdown of this one, for a game that finished 57-40, to there was no scoring in the first quarter. It was 0-0. Zero to zero. You notice we haven't even seen a touchdown yet, and we're getting to this point in the tape, which is pretty wild. That is going to change rather soon here as they start to find their rhythm offensively. UCO... 20 point, 22 points they scored in the second quarter alone. UCM scored 20 of their own, that being just a near miss. And I'll try and get forward to uh, some of the highlights here so I can show you some of these scoring plays. Let's see here. The first touchdown of which coming here on this next play. Under center here is Huff. Takes the shotgun, rather. And the handoff to the right side. That one's going short. I'm trying to find it. It's the touchdowns around here somewhere. Bear with me here as I kind of scrub through a little bit of the film. But you talk about how big of a win this is for UCO. Another team like Emporia that has been... There's the touchdown right there. That is a beautiful finish after the catch. The yak yards were awesome there. Um, but talk about a team like UCO that has struggled to break that top level of the MIAA. A win like this certainly could put you over the edge and do a lot of really big things for your program. So a very exciting win for them. Uh, you move forward and try and find, let's see here, the next touchdown for the Bronchos here. Once again, Huffinger Center here goes to the left side to his man down the sideline. Just one of his three scores on the night for Davis. You love to see that. Had a little bit of a a little bit of a dance and Selly in the end zone. We absolutely love to see it. I'm definitely not one of those guys that's like, you know, act like you've been there before. Shit. This UCO team has not been there before. They have not won a game like this in quite a long time. So I'm all for these guys getting after it and celebrating in that fashion. Here's one more score before we turn off the tape and check out another game. This one, a little bit more of a deep ball down the seam. Great pitch and catch. Stride it out. Touchdown. For the Broncho. So again, big time win for them. Love the shrug afterwards in the end zone. His performance was quite legendary and uh, a lot of question marks now in the MIAA. A lot of question marks. We're not even done talking about the conference and, and what is going on in that conference right now. And looking forward for UCO, you're at Nebraska hearing this next week and then back at home versus Fort Hayes. Man, Things don't get a lot easier for you in this conference. But uh, I, I would say this is probably the best conference in Division II football right now, the MIAA. The way things are shaking out, to have these top five teams get beat by teams that are lower in the conference, you don't see that parity in other conferences anywhere. And I think this is a really special time to be a part of that conference. Here is a look at uh, the post-game celebration from 
the Bronchos down there in central Oklahoma, and rightfully so. The guys were, uh, were definitely getting after it. But, yeah, I mean, the MIAA right now is the best conference in Division II football. The NSIC has a lot of depth. I know we talk about the GLIAC being one of those top-tier conferences. Certainly still the case. The Gulf South you can make an argument for. The MIAA right now, the depth is unmatched in this conference. There are so many teams playing at a high level that it's very impressive. <laughs> Thank you.